Are you looking for senior care for your mom or dad but don't know where to start? Hi, I'm Jen London with The Place for Mom. Nobody knows your parent or loved one better than you, and nobody knows senior living better than the experts at A Place for Mom. They've helped thousands of families find the right place for their mom or dad. I was so glad that I called A Place for Mom. My advisor really listened and was truly my partner in finding senior care for my dad. She went out of her way to get to know him as a person and was always there whenever I had a question. The senior living advisors at A Place for Mom partner with thousands of families every month, listening and offering local knowledge and advice to help find the best senior living communities across the country. And it's a free service. Here's the number. Call A Place for Mom at 1-800-370-2715. There's a place for answers, A Place for Mom. Call today. Call A Place for Mom at 1-800-370-2715. That's 1-800-370-2715. Two. The following is a live copyrighted presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for RadioLawTalk.com with your host, Frederick Penny, attorney at law. And now, RadioLawTalk.com. Welcome to Radio Law Talk. I'm your host, Frederick Penny, with Todd Cunin and our producer, Cal Hunter. We're without our uh, illustrious uh, foundation, the rock of this wonderful show, the smart one, the old, the uh, not old, old, O-L-E, wide, wise one. That is Denise Dirks. And believe me, I was very careful with that. The Denise brains of the outfit ain't yes. here. Ain't here. And so the three musketeers are handling it so far so good. I worry about anything else going off the rails. It has not gone off the rails yet, but it's been very close. If you want to call us at 855-LAW-RADIO, do it, 855-529-7234. Remember, we're not giving legal advice. Uh, seek legal counsel about anything that we're discussing. We're just talking about general topics of law. Go to our website, www.radiolawtalk.com, and at that wonderful website, you can find our disclaimers, and you can go ahead and read those late at night to make yourself comfortable and go to sleep. That means don't call us and ask us for, hey, uh, this is what's going on in my case. What should I do? We can kind of talk general, but be very careful. We're going to have a case or no case we're going to discuss. Uh, This is the third hour, case or no case. So far, Fred Petty is, I'm talking that person in the third, in the third uh, person. That, that's um, what happens when your Instagram account goes to public figure. It you does. Start, you start referring to yourself in the third person. Yes, I am a public figure now, so listen up. So what it comes down to is I've got four, Todd's got two, and Denise has got zero points so far. And with our third one coming up, we're going to try to get more points. What we do, those of you who are listening to us for the first time, is... We have got to go to the first one to 50 points. The other two co-hosts have to buy that other winner dinner. And the last time I, the last year, this last one I won, it was in 2019. And by the way, I went to a hundred dollar a plate dinner, and I enjoyed every bit of it. Thank you, Todd and Denise, for paying for it. At and least I, we could do. And I hope I don't have to do it again. If you win, Todd, I know your favorite place. I don't care. We're going to say it is McDonald's. You are going. I'm going to buy you a Big Mac. Maybe two Big Macs. You, you know, hey, just man's got to do what a man's got to do. We're going to talk <laughs> about some interesting things today. Um, the third hour. Third hour, we usually reserve for some kind of little off-the-wall stuff. Uh, so that's the first and the third hour. Aerosmith's drummer is suing Aerosmith and the former, you know, uh, band members. And don't forget, this is something, it's like, oh, that happens all the time. No, this is like a 50-year relationship. Yeah. And it's interesting what he's suing over. And as I as I studied both, I usually you, you can kind of lean one side or the other, Todd. I, I can't figure out who's right or wrong on this one. And But this is going forward. This is going to be interesting we're going to talk about. We're going to briefly touch on the Affordable Care Act. went up before the Supreme Court. Well, the Supreme Court, uh, it went to appellate courts. And uh, we're going to tell you what the Supreme Court did to not not make a statement, but kind of lean one way as to what they're thinking. Yep. 
And then we're going to talk about Avenatti again. There's always something to talk about when it comes to Avenatti. A very interesting thing about what cell he is in. And what do you mean cell? What do you mean by cell? What He's in the jail. He's in jail being held. Uh, and what cell he's sitting in. We're going to discuss that. And, of course, we always do the most famous thing that everybody likes to do. Cal, let's just roll it again. Case or no case. Now it's time to play Case or No Case. All right. Last time we were in Los Angeles. Now I'm going to take you to Newport News, Virginia, to the home of a woman by the name of Jacqueline, who had a problem in her telephone. All day, every day, for weeks, she was fielding customer service calls for Cuisinart at all hours of the day or night, uh, although she doesn't work for Cuisinart. You see, Cuisinart had a food processor blade breakage problem and offered a toll-free number for, uh, not toll-free, a telephone number for people to call to arrange for a replacement. It was one digit off from Jacqueline's number, and she kept getting calls after calls after calls. Now, Jacqueline wasn't mean to the people. She said she put herself in the customer's shoes and just gave them the correct number and I wasn't mean about it or anything like that. But she said, you know, Cuisinart or the telephone vendor should have to pay me for the inconvenience. So she caught counsel. By the way, according to the telephone records later retrieved, she answered more than 7,000 calls over a three-and-a-half-week period. She couldn't shut off her number. She worked as, a, as an essential government employee, and she was promised by everyone that they'd get it sorted out. And so I ask you, Mr. Cunin, case... Or no case. What say you? Well, are you sure it starts with me? I started the last one. Just do it. Make all you right, start. All right. Ready. Whatever. You got whatever you. Whatever you got trouble. me. Okay. So I'm going to say. It gets picky when things don't go I well. I know. I know. It's a little, little, we'll get a little testy toward the end of the. I know. Uh, right. Well, hour. you know, it's, it's things things are starting to get a little. Uh, you know, they're getting close here in the points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Fred did all that talking about steak dinners. Got me thinking about it. You know. Anyway. I'll say yes. This is a case. And, hmm, I, well, boy, this is tough. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, uh, no, it's a scenario, but it didn't make it to an actual lawsuit. That's what I'll say. Scenario, but no lawsuit. So I guess I'm saying, no, it's not a case. Okay. okay? Mr. Penny, I'm sure you have a retort to that. I absolutely you? do. And I believe this is clearly a scenario. This is nothing you made up. Um is it a case that she brought? Uh, you know what? I hate to do this to you, Todd, but I, I, I agree that it's a scenario, but not a case. I think what happened, this is what I think happened. I think Quiznart gave her a... Quiznart? Is that how Quiznart, yeah. Quiznart. I think they gave her a new blender and a new bread mixer. <laughs> and um, All with the blades intact, and, and, hopefully. And, yeah. But I'm going to just make it so this is more exciting. I'm going to say it's a case, and it, it, it settles, and they give her... A little bit of money, either between the telephone company and Cuisinart, they give her stuff. Cuisinart gives her some free stuff because they do not want the bad publicity. So Cuisinart definitely helps her out, but it's not a case that goes to trial. So you're saying something Settled. was actually filed. Yes, something okay. was actually filed. And I'm saying nothing was filed, but and they still, they, yeah. They settled it or got or or helped her out. Well, it's interesting to see both of you come to different conclusions yes. on the same set of facts. So. Uh, for those of you who say it was not a case, who would that be? Would that be you? That would be me. Okay, so you say no case here. Hmm. 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 Oh, hmm. It's a scenario, but not a case. It's a scenario, I'll guarantee you. It, it, it's a true story. And and when it all happened, uh, she said, I'm not going to go get a lawyer. I would settle if they gave me a bunch of new Cuisinart appliances, but we don't know if they did that or oh. not. Oh, I we, bet they did. I bet they did. You know, I'm sure they did. You know what's I'm interesting sure. about this scenario is her, her phone number was one digit off, right? Mm -hmm. So I had heard, I, you know, I think I verified this. Remember back when they had this whole craze about making collect calls? Just, oh, 1-800-COLLECT and all that. The first company to come out and do it. Well, the competitor for that phone company went out and registered all of the 800 numbers that were very close but incorrectly dialed. Mm. And when people would call it, the an operators would answer, you still thought you were going to the number you had dialed. But the cost per minute for these alternate carriers was often ten times as much. And you had no idea until you got your phone bill. So they had larceny <laughs> at heart for the whole thing. But still, it's a pretty smart move, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And, and I don't know why Cuisinart couldn't pull this off, but they just couldn't get it done. And that, folks, is case 
We're okay. So when we come back, we're going to talk about the Aerosmith uh, drummer lawsuit. We're also going to talk about Affordable Care Act and Avenatti. That case continues to go forth. And the interesting thing, again, about the Avenatti case is where he is in jail and how they're treating him. That's a very interesting issue, especially as lawyers, when you have clients, and Todd, you can talk about that, that are in jail as to how they're treated in jail. And that's very important. So we'll be back after this with case or no, uh, not with uh, Avenatti, Affordable Care Act, and Aerosmith. And Avenatti will be able to say to his potential clients, I feel your pain. <laughs> it's coming back next right here on, on Radio Law Talk. Don't go away. We've got more coming up. for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for this. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. I've got to get my car washed, this dirt, it just won't do. But I don't have no time today, I don't know what I do. Man, I know this place right down the road. Quick, quack, car wash. Uh -huh. Up inside, let's take a ride and watch this cat and shine. Just come and see, I guarantee your ride will steal the show. Come on, quick, quack, car wash. Don't drive that dirty car. Uh -huh. Quick, quack, car wash. They'll have you looking sharp. If you're one of those independent people who wants your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Iceberg Drive-Ins. Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In. Ready to grow with you. All right, guys, we need to have you read some lines for our disclaimer promo. But first, can anybody tell me what a disclaimer is? All right, then. Well, uh, Denise, you go ahead. Non uti consilius me oriere por questus purpurium juris consult... Latin, that's a nice touch. Thank you, Denise. Next time we'll try it in English, if that's okay. Fred, how about you? Cal, I don't want to read all this. Can we just tell the people that we're discussing general legal issues and they should hire their own attorney instead of relying on what we have to say here? Well, we could, I guess. Uh, uh, Chris? I'm not going to be there anyway. Why have me do it? Let's, Let's have, have Todd, Todd do it. it. Me? <laughs> read disclaimers? Why, I couldn't. <clears throat> The information you hear on Radio Law Talk is general... The preceding promo was for entertainment purposes only. And if you want true legal advice, contact your own lawyer. Just a tip from your friends at Radio Law Talk. Be sure to read our disclaimers on RadioLawTalk.com as well. Not all law firms have extensive experience in all areas of the law. It's wise to look for firms that have knowledge and understanding in your particular area of concern. So go to ProLawFirms.com. They have listings of attorneys in key areas of practice, such as family law, estate planning, personal injury, bankruptcy, and so forth. 
When you're looking for a lawyer that has extensive experience in your particular area of need, go to ProLawFirms.com. That's ProLawFirms.com. ProLawFirms.com is not a law firm and does not endorse or recommend any specific law firm. I like the Amargosa Valley. Time to get back to Radio Law Talk on RadioLawTalk.com and on your favorite radio station. Yeah, we're back, and we're going to talk about with Todd and I. I'm Fred Penny, your host with uh, Cal Hunter. We, the, the, this Aerosmith drummer lawsuit, Todd, is an interesting one. And they've been together for, what, about 50, 50 years? 50 years. They have been... Yeah, they have been around the block, and they have been around so long. Speaking of lawsuits, they got into a dispute with one of their former managers over royalties for songs, and there's stuff from their catalog in the early days that because of that lawsuit, they're still not allowed to play during a concert. That's how that's how long they've been around, and nobody knows what it's are because they have come up with a completely different set of songs that are now being played on the classical hit site. But yeah, they they ran into their longtime drummer, Joey Kramer. Well, Joey had some issues with substance abuse. He's also facing some uh, medical problems, and, and it, it caused him to take a hiatus from the band. But when he thought he was, because self-admittedly, he was not capable of doing a show. Right. Okay, so he. But I just want to make sure the substance abuse. We yeah. don't want to put that out there. Is that, that's known and he. Yeah, those, that's yeah, okay. that's he he admits that and and it was also he had a, a psychological issues. Just he just needed to step break. back. He needed, he needed a, break. a break. Right. And but when he said he was ready to come back to the band, the band claims that they had concerns about whether or not he was really going to be able to cut it in a live performance. And given the fact that he's a drummer, I'll talk about this in a minute, why that is far more necessary than maybe any other instrument of the other bandmates. So instead of just welcoming him back with open arms, they made him audition because they had a show coming up. And the show was actually last night. It was the Grammy Awards. And Aerosmith was receiving last an, night, the an 24th? award. The, oh, the 24th. 24th. They were receiving an award. Right. And Aerosmith was going to play at the Grammy Awards. And they did. But before they would let Kramer play with them, they made him audition. Oh. Now, th- now, that's got to, I mean, right, wrong, or otherwise, that has to be the biggest snub to be the founding member of a band for 50 years. You, you take time off to get your body and your head and everything right to, to overcome your demons. And then when you come back to these people that are closer to you than family, arguably, they say, well, okay, get in line, audition with the other drummers, out. try out. And, you know, a, a Kiss did the same thing with some of their former original bandmates, Peter, Chris, and Ace Freely, and it offended them. It just doesn't go over well when this happens. Well, Joey Kramer filed a lawsuit because, you know, all else fails. Get the courts involved, right? Or the lawyers. Get the lawyers involved. So he filed a lawsuit in Massachusetts to seek to have a judge force the band to let him play. Well, that lawsuit was filed, I think, last week. It was filed really quickly because they got this performance coming up. Right. On the 24th, and the judge ruled yesterday, said, no, I'm not going to force the band to let you play. So that lawsuit was denied, but he still was able to, not because the ju- not because the judge ordered it, he still appeared on stage with the band when they received an award for their career. And, stuff. and the individual that took over his job as drummer is his tech. Yes. Now, his tech is... What those are, those you don't follow, you know, concerts or bands that much, is they have an individual that sets up their drums, and the, they have a tech that does the, the guitars for yep. the guitars. And this is a tech, and I'll guarantee you, well, I don't guarantee things, but I almost guarantee you this guy knows a lot of their songs by heart because he's been around the block, and he sets up their, their drums. And I bet he, and I've, I've been to concerts, and they're playing the drums for some of the songs to see how they sound. Yeah, did they do is it- they do a sound check. It's it's really interesting to look at the background. It's not always the party lifestyle. That's a, often a persona. And they do party a lot, but 
a good band will show up for a sound check for easily a couple of hours to make sure that they have it acoustically for the building. But if somebody can't be there, then the tech gets in and plays the drums, and they've got to know the songs and do right. what they're going to do. Now, the thing that I was going to point out here is a lot of times on these shows, it's lip synced, or they have a, a click track or a beat track in the background. And if you're right. playing the guitar or the bass, you know, you can just be playing something that's not necessarily plugged in, the volume's down. If you're a singer, you can lip sync with it or, or sing into Which a microphone that's not turned up, but you can't do that with the drums. The drums are actually playing, right. and if you get off beat, it is terrible for the performance. Everyone follows the drummer. Yes. Because I played in a band. We always laugh about our band, and we love it. I want, It's a, someone you know. He was always off a little bit, and I love him, but it was always that we kind of followed the bass player a little bit. But, yeah. But, but that's you're right. That is that's the, the situation. And that's what Aerosmith on their side was worried about. So let's get to Aerosmith's argument yeah. about this. So, so they basically sent out a statement, and the statement basically says, Joey Kramer is our brother. They start talking about how much they love him, and he's great. However, he has not been emotionally and physically able to perform with the band. Now, that's legitimate, and mm-hmm. that's they're saying that, okay. Um, uh, and by his own admission, they're even saying. And then they say, we even he doesn't feel he's quite ready to get back at it full tilt, and we need to have people or individual band members that can handle their job. And so they go on and say... Um, you know, to ourselves and to our fans, uh, to have him play without adequate time to prepare and rehearse prior to the Emmys is a disservice to our fans. Absolutely, and let's not let's not lose sight of the fact that it's one thing if you try to play in a show, even a sold out auditorium, and you, and you biff it and it goes away and it doesn't turn out that well. It's something completely different when you are on national television and the cameras are right there in your face and things go wrong. That's video that can go viral, that can destroy the credibility of a band in a heartbeat. And they just they could not put the brand on the line and trust this. Yeah, and the funny thing is, is in their statement they say, oh, and by the way, all these things, and compounding this, he chose to file a lawsuit on Friday night. Uh, of the holiday weekend preceding the Grammys. And, yeah. And that's kind of like, okay. So, anyway, we'll be back. We're going to talk more about the law, and uh, we might even talk about something about quick takes. Yes. So that means there's other stuff coming up right here. Great value to you, the Radio Law Talk listeners. So stay tuned. And remember, you can hear us on the radio and online at radiolawtalk.com. Now this. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Why? Because you can save 45% on packages compared to your high-priced cable bill. Wow. Take those giant scissors out and cut the cable and save with Dish TV. Plus, you get a free DVR upgrade to record your favorite shows and free installation. And with Dish Anywhere, you can watch TV for free on your mobile device. Act fast. You can save hundreds of dollars. Does your cable company do that for you? I don't think so. Get all the best TV programming at your fingertips at a fraction of the price of cable TV. So say adios, arrivederci, goodbye to the high cable bill, and save up to 45% on Dish TV packages today. These are limited time offers and can change at any time. Call fast, 800-814-5108. 800-814-5108. 800-814-5108. That's 800-814-5108. Warning, don't let your business get left behind in what is likely to be the biggest economic boom in recent history. If you need to build for your business to grow, call General Steel today for a pre-engineered steel building designed for your needs. No wasted space. Steel prices are expected to rise, but you can still lock in your price on a General Steel building. And you can still save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. As much as half. But you must call now. If you need a church building, office, warehouse, 
warehouse, manufacturing space, retail space, or more. Call General Steel today. You can still get the General's 50-year structural warranty and General Steel quality, all at a price you can afford. So don't let rising steel prices put your project out of reach and stop you from making your company great. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. That's 800-617-9312.org. A public service message from the National Pest Management. Is this real life? Time to get back to Radio Law Talk on RadioLawTalk.com and on your favorite radio station. The Affordable Care Act, or better known as Obamacare, some interesting thing taught, things Todd and I were talking about during the break. What the Obama people argued is that this is a tax, and they were able to do it. And there's been so many issues and fights back and forth, and we're going to get to the second. Yeah. So they said, basically, just to cut to the chase, they found it was a tax. They called it a tax. And so now what happens, the Repub- Republicans are in, uh, are saying the new challenge all starts with the following. They, they cut taxes, and they cut 1.5 trillion taxes in 2017, and basically it repealed the health care laws because uh, they're saying they're not going to basically pay for the tax. And that's how this started when the Fifth Court of Appeals, uh, Fifth U.S. Court of Appeals, Fifth Circuit came involved. Yeah, I mean, if you go back to the very first challenge to Obamacare, 2012, and everybody says, oh, Justice Roberts saved Obamacare because he came up with this. It was I love the way it was pitched. He came up with this novel idea that it was a tax and not a penalty. And, and they win, and even the White House, the the government, uh, the Obama administration said, well, we're, we're happy that it was saved, but we think that the court got it wrong saying it was a tax, not a penalty. Except when you go and you look at the legal filings and the briefs that were filed by the Obama administration, they said it is a tax, not a penalty. So essentially Roberts is saying, look, I agreed with you. What are you throwing me under the bus for? And then now... Here, it's going to backfire. What happened is Congress came in. Now, remember, the signature element of Obamacare was that there was a single-payer requirement, meaning everybody had to buy it. It was, a, it was forced. You had to buy insurance. And that was, you know, is having to buy it. If you don't, is it a penalty tax? They said it was a tax. So you have to buy it. Congress removed the requirement that everybody has to purchase the insurance. Well, when you remove that, you remove the funding for the entire program. And therefore, they defund, they cut the funding. So, so they cut the funding and said, well, if the people don't have to pay for it because of the penalty slash tax, we're not going to go ahead and make up for it with funds out of the government. And essentially, that guts the whole program. Well, this went before, this went before the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals recently mm-hmm. in New Orleans, and the Fifth Circuit said... Yeah, that's an unconstitutional provision. People don't have to buy the insurance. So that was a major blow to Obamacare. They appealed to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, yeah, we don't want to hear this right now. And that's the interesting point we want to talk about, is the Supreme Court did what's called deny cert. In other words, they said, like you said, well, we don't want to talk about it now. The reason the Supreme Court does that is there's a lot of uncertainty and instability right now with that. And they like to let the lower courts work it out or battle it out, battle it out, and then they roll in at the end, just like uh, uh, same-sex marriage. Exactly. They battled it out throughout the states, and then at the, as it kind of came to a head, Supreme Court says, all right, we're ready to come in. And because what they're, what they're looking for, there's been a lot of challenges to Obamacare. I'm using my arms right now. Yes, if you can't it's very see arm, arm So there's been a lot of challenges, but there haven't been – Many, if any, conflicting rulings on the same issue. And the Supreme Court is waiting for that to happen so that they can then step in and say, okay, now that we have conflicting rulings from different district courts on the same issue, we can go ahead and resolve that. Cal? What I found fascinating is California has not waived the tax penalty. If you fail to buy insurance in the Golden State right now, according to their rules and law, you will be you will have this tax or this penalty or whatever you want to call it. So a part of that, I guess, is 
where's the uniformity in the policy? How can a federal well, they can court probably rule take, on that? They could right? probably take that to the to the courts and probably get it overturned. And, the, the, the question that I have is, is, is California doing that as part of, uh, well, it, if California is doing that, it would probably be in connection with your liability for state income tax because of the state law that requires that you have insurance. This is saying essentially that, well, right. this isn't a federal issue in California. It's a state issue. Interesting to see. A lot, a lot of little permutations of every complicated case like yeah, this. Yeah, and what they yeah. do is then, then you get down to the arguments between the state and the federal who's got the power. You know? Exactly. And, and that's that's where we get you know, the state, state, uh, state and federal court. Uh, laws and, and which one applies because there's just even in my practice my civil personal injury practice there are dissimilarities and conflicting cases when it comes to the federal and the state and it's like on health care reimbursement is an example um, uh, when you get involved in an accident who gets reimbursed you know or does the uh, insurance the person's individual health insurance get reversed. Depends if it's under federal or state. And there's it's just it's just complicated. And in fact, they have seminars for us on this that are just super complicated. But anyway, that's what we're gonna follow and see what happens with the Supreme Court there. But I'm telling you, they're gonna let it all fl- you know flush out, and then and then they'll they'll decide later on. Now, Avenatti, we we've, we've been talking about him for quite some time. So Avenatti, those of you who've been living under a rock, as I always say, that's my saying, is he's the lawyer, former lawyer of Stormy Daniels, the one that alleged alleged to have uh, an affair with Donald Trump and the uh, allegations that Donald Trump paid her off not to say anything uh, about the um, supposed uh, meeting up uh, with her during the campaign. You know, this guy does not like Trump. I mean, Avenatti is an attorney that clearly has said he doesn't like Trump, but he has all other issues that we're discussing. I mean, there are so many different issues. The big issue we're talking about here is the Nike scandal, where he supposedly, the allegations are, bribed Nike uh, uh, employees or, and or executives. If you don't pull me X amount of dollars, we're going to reveal some information. So, and then, so he's got that issue. His partner sued him. Uh, Stormy Daniels uh, had an issue with him. Now he's got clients that are claiming that he was they uh, he was taking their money, um, and actually he's going before the New York um, board uh, for uh, as an attorney. You have a a, a board was it the but New York? I or? think it was California. It was the California State. Yes, bar. yeah, I'm sorry, right? California State Bar, not the New York. Yes, and and, and then the. Uh, oh, I so it remember. was so it was the California State Bar. Oh, this happened just about a week ago. And and so he's before the California State Bar and they take a break during these proceedings. Yes. He steps out and he gets arrested. Right. On a violation of his release on bail, the terms and conditions associated with that. And so his attorneys have to go back into this hearing before the state bar and say, he's yeah, gone. Our client isn't going to be able to make it for the rest yeah. of this because he's in custody. <laughs> I mean, that's a oops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happens is, uh, you know, he's in New York now, right? In jail yes. in New York. So they they hike him back to New York, and the issue is, you know, where is he? Where is he being? He, he's being held. Well, don't forget, during the time he's being held. Uh, from my general understanding, is that's when the suicide occurred of um, Epstein. Uh, Epstein. Yeah. And so they were worried. They're arguing. They're worried about his safety because he's a high-profile individual. So they're whole. You know, he's in 24-hour lockdown. He's by himself. He's not with the general public. They're worried about him. And so there's arguments back and forth as to how he's being treated in jail. But the most interesting part that we've we were going to discuss is. He's put in El Chapo's same jail cell that El Chapo was held, the former, you know, uh, kingpin of the Mexican cartels. Did they check the jail cell for any tunnels? <laughs> that's they, what I uh, want to yeah, know. Yeah, they did that, and the guard said, we check on him, but we're taking a nap. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Oh, and the cameras don't work. I don't know yeah. what's going on. Mm. So, so what's happening is he's, he's in solitary confinement, locked down, because they're worried about him hurting himself. He's complaining, and he's complaining... And his lawyers are complaining they don't have access to him like they should. And, and so that happens sometimes, Todd, where they will complain. You know, uh, cli- I know you've had clients uh, that have been in jail about the conditions and how they're being, being mm-hmm. treated. 
but but that's what's going on. But the interesting thing is, is he's sitting in the same jail cell as El Chapo. It, another interesting part about this was the pretrial motion made by the prosecution to prevent the defense from making any reference to Donald one. Trump or Stormy Daniels. And you know the reason why the defense is going to essentially try to argue what my client did is nothing wrong, but now, because he was an opponent and a vocal critic of Donald Trump, Trump sicked the government on him, and now he's got to fight against the government. And that's what the defense is probably going to try to argue. And the court told the prosecutor, I'm sorry, there's no way I can keep that out. That's the way it is. It is yeah. what it is. This is a high, uh, very public trial. I'm not going to keep out Stormy yeah. Daniels or Trump. We'll be back. If you stay right there, we promise we'll come back with the last segment of Radio Law Talk, which contains quick takes and more. You won't want to miss a second of it. It's coming up right after this on this radio station and on RadioLawTalk.com. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. Not all law firms have extensive experience in all areas of the law. It's wise to look for firms that have knowledge and understanding in your particular area of concern. So go to ProLawFirms.com. They have listings of attorneys in key areas of practice, such as family law, estate planning, personal injury, bankruptcy, and so forth. When you're looking for a lawyer that has extensive experience in your particular area of need, go to ProLawFirms.com. That's ProLawFirms.com. ProLawFirms.com is not a law firm and does not endorse or recommend any specific law firm. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. Concussion Medical Clinic knows active people run the risk of the concussion. Soccer, football, even a simple fall can lead to a brain injury. Concussion Medical Clinic can test you before you start a sports program so they can have a baseline and more quickly diagnose a concussion should one occur. They also offer expert witness services if you're involved in a concussion case, and their specialty is the treatment of concussion. So if you have suffered a concussion and want the best concussion care available, give Concussion Medical Clinic a call, 916-259-4043, 916-259-4043 concussion medical clinic hi i'm frederick penny of penny and associates injury lawyers i bet you're tired of hearing lawyer commercials so just relax and listen to music for a few seconds When you or a family member has been injured, call 800-616-4LAW or see us at PennyAssociates.com. See, that wasn't so bad. If you're one of those independent people who wants your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Iceberg Drive-Ins. Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In, ready to grow with you. I'm going to quick quack car wash. Get my car washed, make it quick quack, pretty shiny, sexy, just because I want to. Don't drive dirty. Going to get my car suds in the quick quack car wash. It's the quick quack, quickest and the cleanest pod bar. We're talking three skinny minutes sitting right in your car wash. A hundred feet of cloth washing your car at the quick quack car wash. 
Any Honda, Mazda, Ford, or Chevy, Sauber, Cadillac, quick, whack a spruiser up, just like that. You'll be happy, looking snappy, you'll be glad you was asked a quick, whack. Car wash, get on the web and go to don'tdrivedirty.com and see where you got your closest quick, whack in the local area. Get in your car, get in your truck. Get on the road and come visit the dock. Quick Quack Car Wash, where your car will always leave happy, guaranteed. They take pride in being clean and green by conserving and recycling the water they use only at the Quick Quack Car Wash. That is Armadillo. This is Radio Law Talk. And now, back to the show. We're having a good time. This is our final segment. Thank you for joining us, joining us, all of you. We have such a great audience that uh, calls in and tells us all the time how thankful they are to uh, listen to us. I want to thank uh, KACT 1360 AM in Andrews, Adosa, Mil- Midland, Texas. Uh, these are some of our great affiliates, uh, WBCF 1240 AM and 97.1 FM in Florence, Alabama. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. So the Kate Stein, well, the, the Steinley case. Yes. Yeah. This is the case, if you don't recognize the name, of the woman in San Francisco who was shot and killed, and the gun that shot was in the possession of a an illegal a Mexican citizen living illegally in the United States, Jose Garcia Zarate. Now, Zarate was charged and acquitted in a trial on murder and manslaughter charges. His defense was that the gun went off accidentally. He didn't, uh, he didn't intend to kill anybody. He was holding it, and it just it went off. The bullet didn't it wasn't a direct shot that hit the victim it actually ricocheted off a concrete wall and then went over and, and hit the victim so he wasn't aiming it at her and so a jury acquitted him well that was in the state case he's also facing federal charges for being a felon in possession of a firearm as well as uh, illegal entry and being an illegal um, in possession of a firearm and he was supposed to start trial this week but at the last minute the judge Put the trial on hold because the judge had concerns about Garcia uh, Zarate's mental status. It's common for the courts, when everybody is in session, to ask a defendant if they understand the nature of the charges against them. And essentially, can you tell me what you're charged with? And his response at the hearing was, illegal entry. Well, that's not what he's charged with. And that gave the judge some concern and so he ordered Zarate to undergo a, a medical evaluation which or a mental evaluation which he Zarate declined. So now the court wants to bring him back into court or the judge wants to bring him back into court to order him and the judge did that ordered him to undergo this mental evaluation which brings up a unique situation because Zarate his attorney after court told reporters my client is adamant that he does not have a mental deficiency. He does not have a mental health problem. Mind you, he did a trial two years ago where there was no mental issue. He's just been right. in custody this whole right. time. And he says, on different charges. On different charges, but it, if, if you got a mental deficiency, regardless of the charges, that should have precluded the trial. And he says, I didn't have a mental is- issue then. I don't have one now. Um, and he said, my client is eager to get this trial going so that he can be acquitted. And th- all this means is he's going to spend more time in custody. And so it's a delay. A lot of people would look at it and say, oh, he's getting a break from a judge because he's not going to trial. And his attorney is saying, no, he wants to go to trial. But everything has been placed on hold. And in another note, uh, the victim's family, Kate Steinley, they had filed a civil suit, several different suits, I understand, but the last one was still pending, and it was recently dismissed. Their argument was that the Bureau of Land Management employee who left hit the gun that was ultimately used in a backpack in an unlocked vehicle, that was negligence resulting in the death of Steinley, and the court said there was 
not a causal connection between the two. It was too attenuated, too far removed, too much time had elapsed from the stealing of the gun by whoever. They never proved that it was Zarate and the time of the uh, killing that there's no way they can make their case, so that was dismissed. So the civil suits on Rough. this are all gone. Boy, Kate Stiley, what you feel bad for the family. Absolutely. So Danny Masterson is actually an American actor, and he's an active Scientologist. Um, he's also a disc jockey, but he, he played roles in uh, Stephen Hyde in that, and in that 70s show, The Ranch. I don't know what The Ranch is, but apparently he played uh, uh, Rooster. Uh, Bennett in the ranch, uh, Jameson Rooster Bennett in the ranch, but he's a, a well-known actor. But I, I don't follow uh, actors. But what's going on is there's an allegation that four women uh, were stalked and are harassed. Um, um, uh, there's a lawsuit talking about them being stalked and harassed when they br- brought some allegations against Danny. Okay, and then what happens is. As a member of the Scientology, that's 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 anecdotal. As weird as that sounds, that's a side note and an anecdotal note to this this issue going on. Because when you join the Church of Scientology, apparently you sign a contract, mm-hmm. and the contract. And by the way, the Church of Scientology has been brought in as a co-defendant in this case. And, and when you come in as a member of the Church of Scientology. Your affairs, when it comes to legal issues or disputes, are, according to the Church of Scientology contract that you signed, are supposed to go to JAMS or AAA, which is arbitration, and not to go before the courts. It's it's like when you go to work for somebody and you, you, you sign that employment agreement, and there's an arbitration clause in there that says, if there's an issue dealing with your employment, you'll agree that this can be handled through arbitration. Well, here you've got joining a religious organization where they're trying to say all of this stuff that people would normally go to court for. Yeah. Nope. We've got to go to arbitration for it, which is I've never heard of a church. Yeah. Uh, you know, saying that. And, and my concern here is that in the employment situation, money is changing hands and you're compensated for this and, you know, you're doing work and. I, I don't know that they can show that same relationship that would lead to mandatory arbitration in a uh, priest parishioner type setting. Right. It just yeah. It'll be interesting. Gonna we're going to follow it, but, I, but this is why we're coming to an end of our show, and I had to bring this up. And I, Todd doesn't know this, and Cal doesn't know this, but Denise is coming back. She's been gone for two shows, and while we can, yes, but while that's we that's can, that's clapping that she's coming back. That she's not coming she was back. Gone. Yes, but yes. while she's gone, now's the time to talk about her. Yes. So I, what I want to do as us three young gentlemen, we, we, there's no way we can win against her in case or no case, seems like. She's smarter than us. What fun things can we say about the lovely Denise Dirks, hopefully she's listening, in the next few minutes? Well, I'll tell you one right now because, you know, we all love Denise. She's a, she's, mm-hmm. We love having her on the show. She's terrific. But... When she's losing in case or no case in a particular <laughs> case, she gives me the stink eye. Oh, my goodness. She has looks that could wither you. And that's it. And I think <laughs> that is exactly right. Now, the second thing is when we go off track. Now, Todd and I, a lot of times, and then Cal will, will back it up, too. If you could see her face, the way our studio is, there's three of us, and Todd and Denise look at each other, and I'm on the side, and I look at the both of them, and Cal is through the glass. And Cal, we've all seen this. When we're going off the rails, doing funny things, just full tilt, you notice, and it's usually at the beginning, the first segment, there's no talking by Denise Dirks. It's not that she's not present. She, it's not the stink eye. It's a different look. She gives it's us this look like you are the disgust, biggest just idiots. Disgust, yeah. Would you shut up? <laughs> exactly. well, the thing I like the most about Denise is she's very spirited in her defense of a, of a legal argument, but she's not blind to her legal argument. So if you're making an argument with her, she'll listen, and if it's something that that she can adopt and learn and and move from she's not so concrete in her beliefs that she is blind to a different way of thinking it's it's very refreshing because sometimes you argue with people you feel like you're just arguing against a brick wall but she gives you the courtesy of listening to your arguments and if you make a point that makes sense to her she's quick to tell you yeah and i've heard her say on more than one occasion fred's right 
Todd's right. That's right, Todd. That's right. I've heard her actually say that, which is really cool. When, when she says that, it's usually, I hate to say it, but Todd's right. But yes, well, she Or, or it, you but, don't tell the other part is after the show's over, she walks up and says, I just said that to be nice. You're really not right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I threw you a bone. You know what else it is, though? It is time for Quick Takes. Mr. Penny, you get to give us your Quick Takes All first. i got to say is, if you get in a car with a stranger, and you sit next to some toilet paper and wet wipes... And he or she mentions irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> Be careful if they get out of their car grabbing the toilet paper and wet wipes. Run. Saying, excuse me, I'll be right back. That's a bad thing. Mr. Cunin. This one harkens your... to our second hour, case or no case. All I'm going to say is, if you're looking for industrial strength, rivet-enforced ladies' underwear, you may want to consider skipping Victoria's Secret and head right to the lingerie aisle of your local hardware store. <laughs> You know, they need those, don't they? <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us. Todd, Cal, and I had a good time. We appreciate your listenership. Remember, go to www.radiolawtalk.com. We'll talk to you next week. You have been listening to radiolawtalk.com, a copyrighted presentation of Radio Law Talk Incorporated. This is Wayne Allen Root, relentless conservative warrior, middle class warrior, and always Trump warrior. I have a message for my fellow patriots across America. President Trump is making America great again. He's the only president in my lifetime who is keeping his promises, and his biggest promise is to build that wall. President Trump can only do it with our help. If Congress won't fund Trump's wall, we will. President Trump is one man against the world, and what globalists and socialists around the world want is clear, open borders. It's time to take a stand. We either build the wall, or it's the end of the greatest nation in world history ever blessed by God. That's why I founded the Root for the Wall Pack. 63 million Trump voters together will raise the money President Trump needs for the wall. Anyone who donates $100 or more will get a beautiful commemorative wall brick. Display it proudly. Call 844-ROOT-WALL. That's toll free, 844-ROOT-WALL. Or go to rootwall.com. We will build this wall together. Call 844-ROOT-WALL or go to rootwall.com. Root for the Wall Pack. Pay for it. Responsible for the content of this message. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. Rootwall.com.